Question number seven is what makes an industrial design good? This always happens to my glasses. Woo! Ah! And this. All right, guys, we all know the drill. We all know what is going on, and I hope you guys have been well, safe at home. I got a fire video for you guys today. It's gonna be a challenge that is bigger than this YouTube channel, and it's called the Seven, seven questions, questions Challenge for Industrial Designers. It's gonna be the seven most interesting questions ever in the whole world related to industrial design, and of course, yours truly is gonna answer them today on his 30th birthday. Yes, it is my 30th birthday today, I'm pretty much now in a whole decade category, generation, whatever you want to call it. And it's crazy. I don't quite really know how I feel about it. Jimmy, you're turning 30. What are you doing with your life? Turn things around. What, what kind of diet are you having? Are you eating too much junk food? Are you working out enough? Are you shooting enough YouTube videos, Jimmy? Get to it. Let's go ahead and answer these seven questions. Then once I'm done answering these seven questions, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to your next very favorite industrial designer on YouTube. So I'm going to go ahead and pass off this challenge for them to answer these seven questions themselves. And then they're going to pass it off to the next industrial designer. I'm going to mention that person towards the end of this video. So stick around for that. Who might it be? Who other YouTuber other than Jimmy We'll answer these seven questions. Okay, let's get to it. I'm going to first tell you guys the seven questions. The first question, industrial design is a fairly uncommon field. How did you discover it? Number two, how do you explain your job to those who don't know about industrial design? Number three, what inspirations have developed your industrial design style? Four, which company would you love to design a product for? Five, what is your go-to industrial design program and why? Six, what do you dislike most about industrial design? The very last question, guys. Question number seven is, what makes an industrial design good? Da -da 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 -da. That very last question, guys, I'm excited to hear other people's answers to it because I want to know what other people think about what makes an industrial design good. So let's get to it. Number one, industrial design is a fairly uncommon field. How did you discover it? I first wanted to be a car designer. If you guys follow my YouTube channel, you guys know that I wanted to design cars, looked at cars when I was a kid, always studied them, always looked at them, and I decided to make it a lifelong goal to be a car designer at high school. That's what I was kind of focusing on when I went into junior college, ended up wanting to go to art center to study car design. Ended up thinking it was way too expensive. I didn't want to get in such deep debt. $200,000, $250,000 to become a car designer? I don't think so. So I decided to do a little bit more research, uh, probably one of the smartest things I did. And the more research I did about car design and similar fields, I stumbled upon industrial design. Industrial design was like, oh, it seems like the design of cars, but instead of just cars, I could design everything else. I could design cameras, I could design shoes, I could design tools and furniture and kitchen appliance and home goods and all this kind of stuff. And so I thought, you know, cars is cool, it's definitely something I would like to do later in the future, but right now industrial design seems pretty interesting. Car design to industrial design, that's how I found industrial design. How do you explain your job to those who don't know industrial design? Not a lot of people know about industrial design. Everybody knows about architecture. Everybody knows about graphics design. When somebody first asks me, hey, what do you do? I usually try to avoid saying I'm an industrial designer. The thing I do is I just say, I design products. I design consumer electronic products. Then I'll go on to telling them where I work and the type of products that I currently work on. So I'll say, I work at this place and I design on headphones, computer mice, keyboards for gamers, essentially. So if you guys wanna see the things that I have worked on in the past, my portfolio, as they call it, links should be down and below on my Instagram and my Behance page. The third question, which is, what inspirations have developed your industrial design style, Jimmy? So my industrial design style, I would say, is very conservative, 
but bold. The word that I always end up describing my designs is sleek. I like designing things that are generally black or white, very neutral, very simple, playing around with gloss and matte finishes, and always just with a little bit of touch of color, if needed, if possible, just a little bit of touch of color, maybe a splash of red. My inspiration that developed my style it usually comes from just studying the world. Inspiration comes from everywhere, all the time, and it's up to you to just really be fascinated by it. And when you see something that really catches your eye, you ask yourself why it catches your eye, and you figure out how you can incorporate that into your own industrial design work. And so when I'm out and about, I'm going through to the stores and stuff like that. I'm always looking at cars on the road, studying them, looking at the newest cars, seeing what they did from the last generation and why they did the things that they did from the next generation. So the 2020 model versus the 2019 model. What, what are the things that they did different and why did they do different? These are the things that I'm thinking about in my head and I'm thinking about how can I incorporate that into my own industrial design work. When it comes to literal research and literal inspiration, I like to go on Behance. I like to look at all those beautiful, amazing projects that these super talented industrial designers all around the world have been posting and working on. And I really like just flipping through it, looking at their projects, seeing all the effort that's put into it. I I've looked at so many of these projects where I can see patterns and reoccurring techniques. But then every once in a while, I'll see a technique where I'm like, whoa, that's pretty unique. I've never seen that before. And those are the things that really stand out to me, things that I take note in my mind, and then how I apply them to my work. See the techniques, study uh, different programs, different forms, different angles, different finishes, different present ways of presenting their product. I study all of that, guys, constantly, pretty much almost regularly on a daily basis. The reason why you should do that is because you gotta increase that database that you have in your brain. You gotta be like, I've seen so many different things. I could pull from it from my memory. I can see what is possible. I can see what other people have done and implemented on a realistic level. And then I could build that database in my brain so that I can pull from it when I need to. So that's pretty much my thought process be behind like how I come up with my ideas, where I take inspiration, which will lead to what you see in my work. Which company would you love to design a product for? I think since I've always wanted to be a car designer, designing a flagship car for a car brand would be super bad ass. And it would like like I'm okay with any almost any car brand like to design a flagship for even Honda like the Honda NSX that would be really cool to design one for Toyota designing that very new Supra that would be super super cool or designing that brand new Corvette uh, C8 damn I would have loved to design that car I think the most ultimate car brand to design the most ultimate car would be is Ferrari. I don't know what it is. I look at the LaFerrari and I look at the 918 and I look at the uh, P1 and those three cars are absolutely amazing and the LaFerrari is my favorite out of those three, just the way that it looks. The pedigree of Ferrari and racing, the red dragon that is the LaFerrari, it would be super cool to be able to design a successor uh, LaFerrari, all electric, that thing would be super cool. And so I would wanna design a flagship Ferrari. All right, so next question, guys. What is your go-to industrial design program and why? So my go-to industrial design program is going to have to be SolidWorks. It's really a toss-up between Photoshop and SolidWorks, and some days I say Photoshop, and some days I say SolidWorks, and the reason I throw in Photoshop in there is because it's just so near and dear to my heart, because I've learned Photoshop ever since I was a little kid. I learned uh, how to get the program when I was like 
11, 12 years old, I had a buddy of mine that I met online, never met him in person. He taught me how to use Photoshop and that's where I got started. I knew how to use Photoshop way before uh, industrial design. Photoshop has been such an amazing program for me. I can render in it, I can edit photos in it, I can create presentations in it and it's just so cheap and so simple to get and it's so common out there as well. Whereas SolidWorks, it's really expensive. It's really hard to get your hands on. It only works on Windows, but the possibilities with SolidWorks is endless. You can build stuff with geometry in 3D. You can rotate it around. You can really define your idea. You can 3D print it. You can render it. You can send it out. You can do so many things with SolidWorks. It's just amazing. I love the program. What do you dislike most about industrial design? So the thing that I dislike most about industrial design, well, if I told told you my answer to this a year ago was that I think that there are too many cooks in the kitchen. Like say if you need to design a product for your company, right? There's one person, your boss is saying this, your supervisor is saying this, the company wants this, uh, your, your co-worker wants this, everybody has their own opinion and what do you do in situations like that? Well, I think the reason why I didn't like that at first is because, well, one, I wasn't that good at it. I was still new. I was still an amateur. But once I started building up that skill of figuring out, all right, who are the real cooks and who has the real ideas and how do I handle a situation like this? After, you know, working on a lot more projects with similar situations, I've kind of discovered that Actually, having a lot of cooks in the kitchen is kind of nice because there's a lot of opinions out there and you kind of can figure out your way and which ideas are good and which ideas are bad. Have your own structures and outputs to where you can kind of, you know, satisfy everybody's idea by providing multiple concepts. As I got better at it, having a lot of cooks in the kitchen didn't really uh, affect me as much as it did before. I think nowadays, one thing that I don't like about industrial design is that we have so many different skills and so uh, people usually sometimes come to us not for not necessarily industrial design related tasks a lot of the time. A lot of the time, some people just want me to, you know, create a couple of renderings for them. Hey, Jimmy, can you create a rendering because I need to put it in my presentation? Hey, Jimmy, can you make... uh, this product in these different colors so that I can look at them later. You know, like there's a lot of the times where you're doing things where it's not necessarily design or you're figuring out problems and problem solving and coming up with really cool looking stuff. A lot of the times you're just doing a lot of mundane technician kind of tasks where it's not very exciting. You know, it's not, it's not like it's going to be something you're going to be showing in your portfolio. I just don't like doing it. I'm telling you guys, I just don't like doing stuff like that. That's just me. But if there's a purpose for design and product development, I'm all for it. The very last question, guys. What makes an industrial design good? Last question, guys. Okay. So what makes an industrial design good is um, you could look at these questions in a lot of different ways, I would say. And you could just look at the end product of a product, you could look at an iPhone, you could look at a Mac, you could look at a Honda Accord, you could look at a Samsung monitor. You could look at all of these different things and you could judge it for what it is. But for me, I like to judge industrial design with the whole scope from the designer to the situation of development to the final outcome. So what does this mean? It means that sometimes a company will have very little resources, meaning very little money to make the product that they want. Sometimes uh, the product schedule will be way too quick. Hey guys, we need to come out with a product in the next two months. Let's get started right now and nobody is gonna be sleeping for the next two months. The cost and the situation of schedule and resources and then also what do you end up with? What is the manufacturing product, the packaging, the marketing and all that good stuff and the industrial design and the usability. So with these three things, This to me is what makes a good industrial design because a lot of the times an industrial designer can be very, very talented and if they have little budget and a little bit of time with the circumstance that they were given, 
if they can produce something that is absolutely amazing, which is the third leg here, if they can produce something that's absolutely amazing, I'm just really impressed because you're literally starting off with very little money, you have very little time, and can you produce something that's good, that's fast, that will make it on time, that meets the budgeting requirements, and that is an awesome product that is profitable. Can you do all of those things? Well, the profitable part is a tricky one, but at least if it is a great product, it looks good, it works well, it met the price, it was on time, I would say that is a successful and good industrial design right there. And I think that's a pretty unique uh, point of view when it comes to what makes good industrial design because not a lot of people think about the circumstance part of the product development of a product. It's really easy if you had all the time in the world and all the money in the world to develop a very expensive product for rich people to buy. That's really easy uh, and there's not a lot of challenge in that. But if you are really strict in schedule, if you are really strict in cost, can you still produce something that is good, that works well, and that is on time, and that meets the budget? To me, is what makes in a good industrial design. And you'll never know, right? Who? How do you know if a product is tight in budget? How do you know if this product only took two months to make? You don't really know that. So it's hard to tell. And so I think that's why most people, they always end up judging the end final product in and of itself because that's the easiest one. And so of course, that's always going to be true. You got to judge a product for if it works well, if people are going to buy it and if it looks good and all that good stuff right there. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope those were interesting questions. And if you guys are still around, the person that I will be passing off these questions to is Morna. So if you guys don't know Morna, she is a YouTuber, also an industrial designer, of course. And so I'm gonna go ahead and link her YouTube channel down in the description. So go ahead and check her YouTube channel out. She's gonna be answering these questions next. And I also wanna say that she has been helping me with these questions as well because I was coming up with some questions and they were so-so. And so I reached out to her and I told her about my idea. And so she reached out to her audience and and she asked them uh, if there were certain questions that they wanted to know about YouTubers. And so they helped us out with these questions as well. So thank you, all of you guys, to the Morna fans, to Morna. And I look forward to seeing your video next. So I pass the mic off to you. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you um, will be safe these next couple of months years i don't even know anymore uh and major major news so i was hit up by one of my older professors when i used to go to cal state long beach and if you guys have been watching my videos in the past you guys know that i have brought up possibly wanting to become a real life industrial design professor with a classroom with a class with students with grades and a curriculum. News popped up, got an email, and so things are looking pretty good so far. Um, there's still some things that I gotta figure out with them, but I could possibly be a Cal State Long Beach industrial design professor pretty soon, maybe 2020. We'll see what happens. I'll let you guys know. I'll fill you guys in when I get the info. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, definitely hit that thumbs up button. Also leave a comment down below if there's anything else you'd like me to talk about. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you want to see more videos like this, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.